so again, I could be wrong, but what I'm proposing is that consciousness is fundamental. It's the fundamental nature of reality. I honestly don't know what the nature of objective reality is. But, as a scientist, it's my job to theorize. I can make proposals. I'm probably going to be wrong. But the idea in science is to make specific, precise, mathematically precise, if you can, mathematically precise proposals about the nature of reality, knowing full well that you're probably wrong, but being so precise that you can then do experiments to prove that you're wrong, and then figure out how you might change your theory so that you can get something that's not quite as wrong. So that's what I've been working on. And the direction I'm pursuing is motivated in the following way. Perhaps I know nothing. There's a good chance that everything I believe is false. But if I know anything at all, I know that I'm experiencing headaches, smells, sounds, visual perceptions, and so forth, as experiences, not as a truth about an external world, just as my experiences. So a headache is a good example because a headache is you know, something that no one else can see. You can't see my headache, I can't see your headache, I can't experience it. It's my own personal experience, and it's real as an experience. It's not real as a claim about the external world, but it is real as an experience to me. If you said, oh, your headache isn't real, I'd be very angry with you. Man, it's a real headache. I, you know, I, might, I might need aspirin for it. So, so my idea is to say, I could be wrong about everything, but if I'm not wrong, if, if I'm wrong about experiences, about having experiences, then it's really game over. There's not really any place I can go. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start with, there are experiences and so I have a mathematical model of what I call a conscious agent. Something like me that can have experiences, conscious experiences of smells and tastes and colors and sounds. So the idea then is to have what I call a conscious agent that has conscious experiences, sights, smells, sounds, and tastes, that can then make choices based on what it experiences. And then once it's made a choice about what it wants to do, it can then act on the world, whatever that world is. And then that world will again affect our experiences. And so there's a loop between the world affecting my experiences, my experiences affecting the decisions I make about how to act, and then those actions then working on the world. It's a loop. And then I also think about having a counter. For every experience I have, I can have my own little personal time, which is a, a counter of the experiences. And, and I've discussed it here informally, but we've made this a mathematical model. And what we're trying to do is to develop this, what we call a theory of conscious agents and having networks. So the, so the idea is there is a universe that exists independent of me, whether or not I existed, but it's a universe of consciousness, of conscious agents. Agents that have experiences, make decisions, interacting with each other. So I'm just one I'm one participating in this, and in fact, I'm not just one. I'm, when we look at the whole theory, I'm perhaps an infinite lattice of these conscious agents all interacting. Um, but, and then so are you, so is everybody. It is not just one, con you're one conscious agent, but you're also two, roughly corresponding to the two hemispheres of your brain. And then within each hemisphere, more conscious agents to perhaps an indefinite, indefinitely large number. So again, I could be wrong, but what I'm proposing is that consciousness is fundamental. It's the fundamental nature of reality. And, but I don't want to just have that be some kind of loose, you know, semi-spiritual kind of idea. I'm trying to get a mathematically precise idea. So what do I mean by consciousness? So I'm getting a mathematical model of what I mean by consciousness that's absolutely precise, mathematically precise. And I call this mathematical model a conscious agent. So, I mean, most of the time when you hear people say, I think consciousness is fundamental, it's, it's more about, well, let's meditate and hold hands and, and, and things like that. The, what I'm trying to do is to take that idea and make it very, very rigorous. Here's a mathematical model of consciousness. These are the equations of the dynamics. Yeah, so, so, so the goal is to get a mathematically precise model of consciousness that we can then use um, 
to solve one of the biggest unsolved problems in science, the, the so-called mind-body problem. This is a problem that has perplexed human beings for thousands of years, and, and that is, what is the relationship between our conscious experiences, the taste of garlic, the smell of an onion, the sound of a trumpet, and our physical bodies, the physical world? What is that relationship? How should we understand it? Most neuroscientists and philosophers of mind today are trying to solve that problem by saying that neural activity in the brain is the foundation. That's the reality. So neurons in space and time, physical objects, and their dynamics create or are, they're identical to, consciousness. So somehow when you get a complicated system of neurons, somehow their dynamics or their properties boot up consciousness. But the surprising thing is that we've never been able to get a theory of, of how that could be. There are ideas, maybe somehow information theoretic properties of the dynamics of neural networks, maybe somehow those could boot up consciousness. We do have correlations, right? We know that when you're conscious, your brain has certain information theoretic properties of its dynamics. That's certainly true. So most neuroscientists and philosophers of mind are trying to start with properties of neurons, neural networks, and neural activity, and to try to then get a theory of how consciousness could emerge from that or somehow be identical to that neural activity. And there are a lot of you know, ideas about how we might get a scientific theory. Um, information theoretic properties of, of the, the dynamics, um, certain quantum properties of microtubules, maybe certain you know, frequencies of, of um, firings of neurons and, and, and things like that. But there's not yet been any scientific theory that's actually been proposed which says this neural activity with these, say, information theoretic properties has to be the taste of chocolate. It could not be the taste of a strawberry. It could not be a headache. And these are the mathematical reasons why. So we need laws that take us from neural activity, whatever the properties of neural activity are that we want to propose are the foundation, takes us from those properties of the neurons into the specific conscious experiences and explain exactly why this neural activity lawfully must be that conscious experience. That has never been done. So, there, so when I say there are no scientific theories, that's what I'm saying. No one has ever proposed laws that say this neural activity, uh, based on this law, must be the taste of chocolate. It could not be the smell of garlic. Nothing is, is even close to trying to do that. So, there, so I'll put it very boldly. There are no scientific theories that start with a physical description of the brain, neural activity, and give you consciousness. There's nothing remotely plausible and there are no good ideas about how that might be done. That's the state of play, and we should be very, very frank about it. There are no scientific theories. There are no remotely plausible ideas about how to do that. And that's what got me thinking about this. I mean, I, I tried. I, I'm a physicalist by, at, at heart, like everybody else. But when everybody's failing deeply, and I have no good ideas, no one has any good ideas about how to start with a brain and get consciousness, I decided, let's try the other direction. So let's try to solve the mind-body problem with a theory of consciousness on its own terms. So first start with consciousness and say, propose as a scientific hypothesis that consciousness is fundamental, get a mathematical model of it, and then solve the mind-body problem the other direction. So instead of starting with physics and getting consciousness, start with consciousness mathematically described, not a hand wave, a mathematical model of consciousness, and get back all of quantum physics and relativity theory. So ultimately, we, as a scientist, we want one theoretical framework that covers everything we know, right? From a physicalist point of view, which most people are, you want to start with what we know about physics, you know, string theory, relativity theory, and so forth, uh, and then neural networks and their activity, and get consciousness out. So we have one big picture that, of the universe that gets it all in. We haven't been able to do that because we can't get consciousness in. So I'm trying to start with a mathematical model of consciousness and its dynamics and then see if I can't get out um, you know, string theory, um, quantum gravity, and maybe ideally make some new predictions that the physicists haven't made. If I can do that, then we're off to a real scientific adventure. <laughs>